This is a video I don't want to make. I don't. Uh, Genesis is one of, if not my favorite bands of all time. And I just watched the last Domino concert that they did. People are uploading them onto YouTube. And uh, the shock of what I saw on stage, um, I just feel the need to rant about it get it off my chest, cleanse myself, have other Genesis fans weigh in and see what I'm seeing and and, and help me in, in dealing with the realities that I saw. Stick around. Let's, let's get this over with. This is Dancing with Ghosts. So a few years ago, I did a video on my channel called Phil Collins, It's Time to Retire. Uh, I was basically addressing the fact that his video from his solo shows leaked online and his voice sounded awful. He was falling down on stage. He was sounding incoherent in interviews because I think he's on some kind of medication of some sort. And um, it left me with this numb foot. And um, we'll believe you. Can't feel a bloody thing. Uh, he can't play drums anymore. Uh, it just, the whole thing was sad to me, personally, as someone like who really loves the dude, you know, as far as, you know, the music that he's given me over the years. So I, like, I wanted him to just stop because it's it's embarrassing. It's sad. It, it, uh, above any, everything else, it's fucking sad to see a legend, like, fade fade away like that. So I made that video. Half the people agreed with me. Half the people were just Phil Collins bootlickers who were just like, let the man do whatever he wants to do. And oh, well, I don't understand this culture of like, you know, if something is not good, if something is subpar and people are still willing to pay money for it, it's like, oh, well, just, just let them do it. You know, it's like, I don't know, man. I just kind of feel like there should be a level of quality control if you're paying money to see a show. Um, and I feel like a lot of times these artists take advantage of the fact that they know people are just going to show up one way or the other, even if it sounds like garbage. So anyway, I did that video. A little backstory on Phil Collins. He retired in 2011 from music because he wanted to spend more time focusing on his family. Well, apparently he got pretty fucking sick of his family because by 2013, he was back in the game. He was playing shows at his son's school. He uh, came out with a book called Not Dead Yet, which I have uh, listened to uh, and through the audiobook. And uh, it's pretty interesting. Wish he had gone more in depth about some stuff, but, you know, I, I might go back and give it another listen. Anyway, uh, he did a Not Dead Yet tour, and that's where all the videos started surfacing of his live performances, and there was even this TMZ video where he fell in his chair because he can't stand anymore, um, and it was kind of this, it was, it was an embarrassment. It, he looked like a elderly old man. Oh, forgot to plug my blue lights in. Okay, now my set just became instantly cooler. Sorry, forgot the lights. Anyway, uh, so I decided to make my video after seeing all that stuff. And uh, then, of course, I hear that there's going to be uh, Genesis shows. Inevitably, that was going to happen. He's doing his solo stuff. He spent all these years in Genesis. Why not do a Genesis show? And so the last domino was announced a couple years ago before the pandemic fucked everyone's life up. And uh, again, with, even with the name, like the last domino, it's like, again, they're, they're kind of leaning on their most successful album, Invisible Touch. And it's like, I just kind of wish they'd come up with a more creative name for the concert series than yet another tie-in to Invisible Touch because they have a song on Invisible Touch called Domino. Anyway... Whatever, I guess it's kind of a clever name, Last Domino. And at this point, I'm like really concerned because like I, I genuinely love Genesis. Phil's solo stuff, I could take it or leave it. In the Air Tonight's a great song. There's uh, a handful of great uh, songs he did for his solo stuff. But in general, you know, who cares as far as I was concerned. But when Genesis announced that they were going to 
be doing a tour, I'm like, oh no, don't don't ruin my favorite band with with your diminished ability, Phil. Come on, buddy, I love you, but you're not show ready. You're not in show mode. You can't do it anymore. Uh, I don't know if you need more surgeries. I don't know if there's something they could do to, you, to help your voice, but it is just, oh my God. You'll see what I'm talking about in a little bit. But anyway, y- you you look at the show and it's uh, it looks good. In fact, the lighting it looks like they're they're almost doing like the the old school lighting that they used to have with like the big par can washes and all that. It's 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 got a retro feel as far as the stage design, and they're not going as. Uh, postmodern with the set design like they did on the Come Rain or Shine tour in 2007. I thought that stage looked kind of weird. This looks a lot more Genesis than their other stage did back in 2007. But the uh, first thing you'll notice when you watch one of these videos from their newest concert series is uh, Phil Collins is sitting, sitting down. He, he can no longer stand anymore. Um, he's got uh, back problems. He's had surgeries. Um, he can stand. Like, he doesn't need a wheelchair to get around or anything, but, like, he needs a walking cane and all that. So to play a two-and-a-half-hour show, which is impressive that they're still able to do that, he, he his ass needs to sit down. Also, going back to the chair thing, why, if you're going to sit in a chair, why are you just grabbing the chair out of the intern's office that they got at Office Depot. Like, when Dave Grohl broke his leg, look at the badass chair that he had made. I mean, that that's how you sit in a chair if you're gonna sit in a fucking chair during the concert. You don't get this fucking Office Depot chair that you just rolled from the backstage. Like, what? It, why? why? Like, Dave Grohl's chair was so badass, he even let Axl Rose borrow it when Axl Rose, like, broke his leg. So, I I don't know what's up with, with the chair. The, uh, that is the most... Uh, I know I'm being petty right now, but... <laughs> that is the most basic-ass, like, office chair. And that's that's how you're going to present yourself on stage. I, again, what is the Genesis, Genesis Camp thinking at this point? That just looks wrong for a Genesis show. Phil Collins was always the consummate entertainer and frontman and performer and seeing him run around on stage and just command that attention that you get from standing rather than sitting it is not lost on me right now that i am sitting and commanding no attention anyway the second thing you'll notice is uh instead of their longtime drummer chester thompson behind the kit you got his son Nick and the dude kills it and he's very young he's like 19 or 20 at this point um does a fantastic job does his does his father proud I would say um and the fact that someone that young would be so interested in playing these old songs that like definitely are way uh past his you know what his appreciation should be you know kids 19 20 they're they like whatever is f- popular on TikTok. So the fact that Nick is is flawlessly pulling off Firth of Fifth and uh, you know Duke's uh, journey and all that, like you know, props to him. You know, so that that was cool. Um, but then the singing starts. And that's where I almost cry. They open up with, uh, as I said before, Duke's intro. Then they go into turn it on again, and it's like, okay, that that's not sounding right at all. And then they go into Mama. Mama is my favorite Genesis song of all time, and they it's a live staple. They always do it live. 
And when I heard that synth bass come in that fades into the song, I heard how low it was. I'm like, holy shit, how how many keys did they have to lower this song for him to sing it? And then he comes in with the first few lines and it's so weak and it sounds so just, as I said in my previous Phil Collins video, his voice has been reduced to a thin elderly squawk. I mean, God, this song must have been lowered at least two or three keys compared to the original key that he sang it in. And it doesn't get any better after that. And and the keys to the songs are lowered so much that, like, the synth sounds and the guitar sounds, they, like, barely, they, like, barely work now. Because, especially like on a synthesizer, if you take a a sound and you lower it, it changes the property and the timbre of that sound. You can pull it off if it's like one step down, but when you're having to lower your music as much as they do for these, some of the keyboard parts sound weird. They don't sound right. Some of the guitars sound very weird because they're not supposed to be played that low but that's how they have to do it to accommodate phil's vocals and uh his it's just every song is disappointment after disappointment not musically musically tony and mike are, are on their shit especially tony i mean we all know that he he he's like the music maestro. Tony is is god to me in in terms of a composer and a songwriter. Like that guy uh can do no wrong in my book. And I'm even talking about his solo stuff which I've never done a video on, but um I might do it in the future. Uh he he writes some good stuff, but he obviously did his best work in Genesis. He saved his A material for Genesis. You'll also notice that Phil has backup singers on stage now. And they're not necessarily doing harmonies. They are they are handling some of the workload of the main melody. There are certain songs where the backup singers have to come in and hit the higher notes just because Phil simply can't do it anymore. No matter how how low you lower the song, there are still certain notes that he can't hit anymore. And these are songs that, like, he could have crushed. Even in 2007, they were lowering the key, but he at least was able to sing all the songs in their lowered key. And some songs, they didn't have to lower the key back in 2007. Like, Hold On My Heart uh, was in its original key, and it sounded just like he did back in the day, but um, not so anymore. Uh, So it was... That was another disappointment, seeing backup singers just so he could sing the songs. Watching this in general was eerie. Not just the fact that a lot of times they're bathed in this uh, very foggy atmosphere and it's very dark. Um, It's bizarre and eerie in the sense of like, say Genesis was a person and you really loved that person and then that person died. And you loved them so much you really just wanted to see them again no matter what the cost was no matter how disturbing so you go to the graveyard and you open up the casket and you look at the body inside and it's like yeah that's kind of what they look like those are the same clothes they were wearing but oh my god that is just it's 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 all decomposed and 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 not right that's how it was watching this it was like Oh man, yeah, that's that's Genesis, but that's not at all what it's supposed to sound like. It's almost like a morbid curiosity thing like, ooh, how do they sound now like with Phil as as diminished as he is and it it it's sad, dude. It's sad and it's eerie. So I'm going to go ahead and run through the set list. Uh, the set list is pretty, you know, standard, fair post Peter Gabriel era. 
uh, post-Steve Hackett era Genesis. You know, they just stick to the hits. They just stick to the last three albums they did. And no, I'm not talking about the album with Ray Wilson. We shall not name that album. But um, they, they open up with Duke's intro. They've been opening up with that song forever now. I'm over it. Um, it's an okay song. It just sounds like... I don't know. I always, to me, it always sounded like something that you would hear on like... It's the 2021 PGA Tour, you know, like some, like the intro to like a golf tournament or something. I don't know. <laughs> then they go into Turn It On Again, which is like a kind of another staple to go into after Duke's intro. And, um, you know, so like pretty much this goes without saying for all the songs, all the keys are lowered several, several keys down. And uh, so you're basically just going off of that. Uh, it sounds like it sounds. The music is there. Then they go into Mama, which is a huge kick in my nuts. Makes me sad. Very, very sad. Then they go into Home by the Sea. They play this at every show. Um, and the instrumental portion was cool, like Home by the Sea Part 2. Uh, again, goes without saying, Phil's voice does not sound good on any... If, Basically, I'll put it this way. I will point out if Phil's voice struck me as good during any of this. You have Fading Lights, um, which was the last song on We Can't Dance, and it was kind of a kind of an homage or kind of a um, to the fans, kind of like, you know, this is our last album. I think Phil kind of knew he was leaving, even though I think during the time he, he didn't say he, he was planning on leaving, but um, he just did. Uh, then he did his solo stuff throughout the late later part of the 90s um i never cared for fading lights it's okay but um even at, even at the time it just felt like a very sleepy song we can't dance in general feels like a sleepy album they cut off some b-sides that really would have made that album more feel more like present and aggressive but they took them out anyway um i did a whole review on we can't dance if you're interested in checking that out by the way you click on the card here yeah, point to the right direction. Then they go into uh, Cinema Show uh, Solo, which, again, they've been doing this one forever now. Um, I'm so tired of hearing the Cinema Show at their... Uh, just, and it's not the whole song. It's just the clip. Um, it's it's like... I feel like I'm watching a carbon copy of their 2007 concert. They They really haven't changed things up very much. There are a few fun surprises in here that we'll get to. Then they go into Afterglow, After Cinema Show. I never really cared for Afterglow that much. Uh, it almost sounds like Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas if you listen to the chords. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Uh, just go back and listen to it. Tony Banks even said he thought that he accidentally ripped off those chords, but then when he went back and listened to it, it was slightly different. Uh, they so then after after close they uh, do this kind of interesting thing that I did like they um, all the band members like like walked away from their instruments and like smaller like Tony Banks had like a more minimal keyboard set up like next to Phil uh, Mike walked over to Phil with an acoustic uh, or a bass no he was playing a bass Dale Sturmer had an acoustic and his son Nick had a smaller drum setup. And then they ran through a few songs like that, which was, you know, it, it was more of a stripped down thing, which I thought was kind of cool. They did That's All. You know, at this point in the show, you're so used to Phil's voice, how it sounds now, that you kind of like forget how much better it used to sound. So you are you kind of get used to it. And it's just like, all right. I guess, you know, so they do That's All that's like semi-acoustic. And then they do um, part of The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, like acoustically, which I thought was really cool. Like, that was a moment where I thought, okay, Phil's voice can still kind of suit this song because Peter Gabriel, in general, had a lower... His voice sat lower in the tone range or in the pitch range, I should say, and Phil always could sing higher than Peter. 
And now that he's singing a song that by nature is lower than what Phil would normally sing, it kind of feels a little bit more right. I don't know. You do something with that statement. Then they do follow you, follow me again. You know, this is this 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 set list is so catered to like the casual fans. Um, you know, they do throw in the lamb lies down and stuff like that here and there, but you know, they're only doing snippets because you know, if they did the full song, then they wouldn't be able to do all these hit songs because the old Genesis songs are like eight, nine, ten minutes long. So I I get it. They, then they bust into a song that I wish they had done when Phil could actually sing, Duchess. I fucking love that song off of um, Duke. Yeah, that's that's the name of the album. Uh, yeah, Duchess is a, a fantastic song. It was cool to hear them bust that one out. Again, wish they had done that one earlier in their in their touring life. They have done it, but not in a long time. Then they do No Son of Mine. That's like a staple for them. That's one where you really need to have that commanding, powerful Phil Collins voice to make that song work, which he doesn't, so it doesn't. Next, they do the instrumental from Firth of Fifth. Poor Phil has to just sit there in his chair and not do anything because he can't play drums anymore. He used to get behind the drum set with Chester Thompson, and they would both play the exact same parts. And since Phil played left-handed and Chester played right-handed, they were like side by side and it looked really fucking cool. Um, Can't do that now. So, but Nick killed it, you know, what can you say? Uh, Then they go into, I know what I like in your wardrobe, clearly trying to give the old heads their, uh, their due. Although these two songs they've done time and time again, um, it's like, would it kill them to like do something a little bit, you know, non-standard in their old, their old back catalog, maybe throw in some, um, I don't know, a uh, musical box or something like that. They used to do that, but, and again, I digress. They go into Domino. I'm fu- I'm so fucking sick of Domino. Like, I, I, ca- I like it on the album, but like, I don't know why they always insist on playing this song live. It takes up a lot of time in the set that they could have done different songs. And I don't think, are there any fans out there that really just love that song? I mean, to me, that 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 was like their last or one of their last concept long songs or whatever, because like Driving the Last Spike was technically their last long concept song. But um, I, don't, I mean, like I said, it's okay, but never really did anything to me or for me. Uh, then they go into their, I guess this is them going into their um, invisible touch portion of the concert because then they do throwing it all away. And um, I, I hate that song. <laughs> I'm so sick of that song. It, it sounds like it could have been a Phil Collins solo album song, but it's a Genesis song. Um, Mike Rutherford wrote it, I believe. Go figure. Um, he he doesn't even do the him away. Yay! And then the audience chants it back. Him away. Yay! He, he, he can't do that anymore with his voice, which I am eternally grateful for because I hated it when he would do that live. It's like, I'm sure if you're at the show, that was like really cool and engaging. But like as a viewer, just watching it on TV, I'm like, OK, get to the fu- get to the fucking song or I just skip the song altogether. And then they go into Invisible Touch and it it is so like tuned down as far as like the pitch It just sounds so fucking weird, man. Um, Then they go into I Can't Dance, which, you know, the I can't dance, I can't talk, or whatever. If you think for a second Phil is pulling those notes off, you you are out of your depth, my friend. He doesn't even attempt to. Doesn't happen. Wasn't gonna happen. He does. Uh, he does like the first little bit of dancing with the moonlit night, which was cool. Like that was fun to hear. Um, and then they finish with carpet crawlers, which is another song I'm pretty much uh, sick of. Uh, they they do it every set and again uh, do the lamia you know do uh, do do um, f- fly on the windshield you know um, do a do a cool like kick ass song from the lamb carpet crawlers is the most like laid back of all of them 
would be really cool to hear a chamber of 32 doors. That's Peter Gabriel at his most Peter Gabrielist. I digress. Um, but yeah, it, uh, it, it was overall, um, it was sad, man. It really was. I, there's reasons why bands stop. There's reasons why bands break up, especially bands that have been around for a really long time. They see when it's over. They see that it's time to pull the plug, cash in, cash out, whatever. They don't want to tarnish their legacy. They don't want to be that band that's up there and just, you know, looking silly. And that's what's happening and all the people in the comments, not all, but a lot of people in the comments are like, it's so sad to see Phil like this. This is what people avoid when they bow out gracefully when they're still, you know, on top of their fucking game. It's arguable that 2007 was a little iffy, but still serviceable. Still would have loved to have seen the show. Phil's voice had diminished, but not to this point. The dude can barely squawk out notes. This is why you stop playing when you are still on top of the game. Because this is sad. And I feel like anybody like in the industry watching this is going, Ooh, Phil, what are you doing, man? The audience loves it because there are people out there who just don't care. They don't. Th these are the same people who will go out and see a band like Leonard Skinner when there is not even one original member left in Leonard Skinner. There might be one original member. Gary Rossington might still be in there. But when I saw him at Rockville, he wasn't there. So anyway, there are bands out there right now where there is not one original member left and they're still selling tickets. So you coast off your legacy to a certain degree with that. But I mean, Jesus, at least with the bands with no original members, they're like top flight studio musicians who can play the fuck out of their parts and sing the shit out of their parts. I mean, it's great to have an original member, but when they can't do the job, it's like, God, I don't know anymore. So to all the haters, Genesis is one of my, you see these box sets? This is, these are all Genesis albums. And they're rare now, too, those box sets. You can get a lot of money for those if you sell them on eBay. But anyway, I love Genesis. They're one of my favorite bands. That's why I'm making this video, because I fucking hated seeing this happening. I almost wanted to cry when I saw Mama. I'm not even joking. So you can take your uh, fuck yous and all your hateful comments, and you can fuck off with that shit. Because if you're sitting here thinking that I'm trying to like make ad revenue off of this or anything like that, your head is completely and fully up your ass. I love this band. I love what Phil Collins has done musically. I love Tony Banks. I love Mike Rutherford. I love Mike or uh, Steve Hackett. <laughs> Sorry. he's. No one ever talks about Steve Hackett, okay? Like, his name escapes me. I fucking love Peter Gabriel. He's like my idol in so many other ways because I love his solo stuff. Got to do a video on him on some, uh, some point. Um, so, yeah. It's just sad to see, and that's all That's all I got, man. Go watch the concert for yourself and tell me I'm fucking wrong. Sorry for all the aggression at the end of the video. Um, so anyway, videos are appearing around me. I've done several videos about uh, Genesis uh, ranking their albums A to D. Uh, I did the video about Phil Collins' it's Time to Retire. I covered a video. Uh, I did a full in-depth review on Genesis's. uh we Can't Dance album. So if, you, if you're interested in more of my content about Genesis, there's plenty of videos that I have talking about that. Um, if you like my band Dancing With Ghosts and you're only interested in hearing Dancing With Ghosts music and you don't care about any of these other commentary videos I do, uh, I made a separate channel that just has my music and my music videos on there. The link to that will be in the description. Thank you guys for watching so much. And I hope you, you know, took this with... Uh, the right energy and didn't get um, your pitchforks out to, to stab me with. But anyway, have a good rest of your night, everyone.